This video is about a very familiar bird to a lot of us, the common moorhen, often just called the moorhen because it's the only moorhen we have here in the UK. This bird is often found around standing fresh water found inland. It's easily told apart from its relatively close relative, the coot, by having a red bill tipped with yellow, and also a red frontal shield, along with white markings on its tail and sides. When compared directly to the coot, you can see how the coot has a far more jet black appearance. The moorhen is actually brown on its back and wings, and the so-called black areas of the moorhen are more slaty coloured than the coot. Because of the areas where they're likely to be found, and the kind of birds that they're normally associated with, people make the mistake of thinking these birds are a kind of duck. But if you look closely, it's not hard to see some key differences. Ducks have webbed feet and broad bills, moorhens don't have either of these. Along with this, there's several less visible characteristics which distinguish it from the ducks. In fact, ducks and other wildfowl, such as the geese and the swans, called waterfowl in America, are actually in a very separate clade of birds, along with the game birds, and it's a separation that goes back millions of years, separating them from other flying birds. Moorhens, in fact, are in the same family as birds such as the water rail and other rails. It's a family that spreads the globe, and going even further than that, they're in the order Gruiforms, which contains birds like the, the large common crane. There are many species of moorhen, and this type, the common moorhen, can be found spread wide across the Palearctic region of the world. In North America, it's replaced by the common gallinule, which, putting the name aside, is a very similar species. If you look at the feet of the moorhen, you can see that they're obviously very large. This helps them walk across mud, and even lily pads in some cases, in search for food. They share this characteristic with many members of the family. But if you look at the coot's feet, you can see it's got some very obvious lobes on there, which help with propulsion through the water. Moorhens don't really have this, but the large size does help them swim pretty well. Moorhens, though, as a group, are not as bound to water as you might first think. In some cases, they can actually be found quite a distance from water. This means that an ability to swim with great efficiency might not be as important as other aspects. They're often found in and around reed beds too. It's a habitat where they often make nests. This means that like the bittern, they'll use their long toes to grip and grasp onto reeds. Not that they're closely related to bitterns. Moorhens are very interesting birds when it comes to breeding behaviour. I mentioned in the long-tailed tit video that along with long-tailed tits, moorhens are the only birds in Britain where it's known they perform cooperative breeding this is where the parents will have multiple broods in a season, and chicks from earlier broods will assist or totally raise chicks from later broods. But if we rewind to before the eggs have even hatched, moorhens breeding behaviour is strange even from here. You may well have seen moorhens getting in very dramatic fights around the breeding season, but this isn't what I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about brood parasitism, which is where moorhens will lay their eggs in other birds' nests, just like the common cuckoo. But unlike the common cuckoo, these nests won't belong to birds of another species, they'll simply be the nests of other moorhens. And male moorhens will frequently mate with many females, which I talked about in the Dunnock video as being polygynous behaviour. A moorhen's diet varies quite a lot. Like I said, they'll forage for food in the mud, this means that naturally they'll come across worms quite a lot, but they'll also eat vegetable matter, insect life, grains, and infrequently, maybe even vertebrates of a small description. And there you go, the common moorhen. A really easy bird to see, anyone can get to grips with what they look like, but an interesting bird nonetheless. And so that's pretty much it, so I'll see you later.